Right. Um, I see that there are some comments in the chat as well. Yes, uh, it's it's really good to see so many comments. Uh, so as like, I mean, I think uh, the general agreement is that, uh, so basically uh, how these line charts and radar charts, those are kind of complementary to each other. Uh, clarity wise, it's always line charts are superior because uh, you have, I mean, it's basically because it occupies larger uh, screen area because you have larger screen area, you can uh, put things more clearly. But then again, that that itself becomes a disadvantage uh, if you are trying to have a dashboard with so many items, right? So it's always uh, the way you interpret. I think yeah, the entire discussion around data visualizer uh, uh, session today and which chart type to use, it's mostly, yes, there are some key elements that you have to compare, uh, some, um, some like fundamental uh, concepts uh, which are applicable to each of the different chart types. But other than that, it's mostly about uh, the, the specific use case, the scenario that you try to apply this, right? Okay, fine. So um, let me share my screen again. All right, so uh, I'm going to open the data visualizer. And let's create a line chart. So I will select line. And for the data, let me select uh, data element from the HIV group. And I will search for PLHIV new on ART, this one, okay, select it. And um, period, I will select last 12 months and the organization unit, I will keep it at training land. And we'll also add this one to the series, okay. And let's try to update and see what happens. Right, there we go. So what do we see here? If we try to interpret, we will start with filter. We are seeing data for training land, PLHIV on ART. And for the x-axis, we are seeing the periods last 12 months. And the series, we are seeing the gender disaggregation of uh, the uh, PLHIV new on ART. Okay, right. So what can we say about this? I mean, how, like if I just ask you to interpret, okay? Now, um, what happens? Like if you, uh, okay, so I will just ask it in a simple way and let's see how uh, this direction you will interpret. So if, can, can someone interpret the data just looking by looking at this chart, what can you say about it? I mean, like say something about this chart. Yeah, uh, actually for me, there are two things. Mm -hmm. what one the um when you see the trend the both of the two trends uh for person living with HIV for a new who house who have been put on for a new on ART, you see that there is um, a big difference between females and the males where females are being infected by HIV uh, are getting uh, new infections uh, on high rates comparing to the males at the mm -hmm. first observation then um, uh, not only that the the other things that um yeah for females for males there there is a lower number comparing to the females that's what i can say and also okay. there is an increase there is an increase uh from May up to May 2020 up to 20, uh, to April 21, for both male and females, there uh, you can see that there is um, an increase in, for a new HIV infections. Fine. So, uh, can you also say uh, something about by, by looking at this uh, this visualization? Can you say the, say something about the gap between male and female, uh, like? What can you say about it? Maybe like uh, 
by May 2020, and you can compare it with the value of April 2021. What do you think about the gap? So one thing you have to notice, like say we we have uh, like say around thousand uh, gap, which is there by uh, May 2020, and this gap, uh, I mean it persists right throughout the year, and by April 2020, we are seeing again a gap of around 1,100, right? But like yeah. again, do we have any idea about what? must have happened because all these people are living right so i mean like not all this but like most of them are living if they if they are all living what may have happened to the cumulative like i mean when you take the entire number of people with uh, hiv uh, how could that be different for the entire training can we get that idea uh, come again please yeah what i would say is like say for example a thousand gap here here around 1100 right all this while the gap remains so when we consider about the cumulative total yeah, of all people living and uh, maybe the cumulative of males and female, does this type of visualization, uh, you know, like uh, does it explain it well whether the gap of cumulatives have been uh, increasing or not? Sure, maybe uh, um, when you consider the increase or uh, the variation for cumulative or uh, those uh, person living with HIV. Um, you, you may also consider other movements in and out because these are new, but you may have some who have been died or some have been, uh, uh, who have, uh, who, who have uh, maybe lo lo have been lost out. So, but considering that the, for other say the movements, there were nothing happened. You may see that there is also an increase between female and uh, males. Even the difference will remain the same between 1,000 or one, between 1,000 and 1,100 1, something. So yeah. if you don't, if you we consider that other movements remain zero, mm -hmm. we we will still have the difference of uh, 1,000. Okay. So let me show you something different. Right now, I'm going to click on options. Uh, uh, one, sorry. Yeah, I wanted to give my view and a little bit of, on the disaggregated data here with people living with HIV new on ART. Uh, even though the gap has maintained in the range of a thousand between male and females who are new on ART, but I, I'm not sure whether the graph or the visualization is saying that the infection rate is higher in females than male. I'm thinking maybe a, there's a possibility that males could be higher than female, but maybe females are, are always going for their ART treatment and males are a bit delinquent because from what I can see, the graph is saying people living with HIV new on ART. All right, so, yeah, yeah, I agree. So in fact, like this is how you interpret, right? So when you get a visualization, the way you interpret is, is going to be always different. So to do that, we always have to apply the context parameter to the visualization. So I think this is exactly what we will be discussing on, I think on day eight in interpretations. So, so uh, I think like you are heading somewhere down that direction. So I will just pose it there because uh, that's a separate, uh, we'll keep that discussion for a separate day. But what I wanted to highlight was that let me apply the cumulative values here and see what happens. Like even though the same gap continues, what happens to the gap between the males and female cumulative? So I'm going to update, uh, update it and you can see here, right? So these are the cumulative values, right? And now you can see because we have this gap, the cumulative difference between the two are keep, keeping on increasing, right? So this may be one visualization that you want to highlight, right? This gap because the, the, the same gap between male and female persist, the cumulative gap keeps on widening, right? Widening. All right, so I will just stop it there. Interpretation part of it, we will uh, certainly do on day eight. Okay, all right, so the time is, yeah, it's 3.50 here. So today, as I told you before, uh, we, 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 we will, exceed the mark of three hour that we usually do, uh, unfortunately, because there are too many sessions to cover. Right, so let us quickly uh, move on to the next section.
where we'll be discussing one disadvantage of uh, line charts and how we are going to overcome it. So I think there were a couple of examples that uh, you all discussed uh, where you felt that line charts may not be ideal, especially to compare the differences between same time period or between same months across the years. Say so like whether there was difference, I mean, whether we note something different between Janu months of January and month of October across uh, three different years, right? So to do this kind of a visualization, we have something called uh, year over year uh, chart visualization. Okay, right. So let me open up one favorite. I will just click on open and let's see whether it's there. Yeah. So we open BCG coverage year over year, three year comparison. And we can see the type is year over year line, right? I click and open it. And this is what I see. Okay. Right. So let's try to uh, interpret what we are seeing here. So first of all, we are seeing year over year line chart and the parameters that we can configure have now changed. Like, of course, we are seeing filter category and series filter. We, we can see it's the organization unit and the data which comes into this entire uh, visualization. And when we are visualizing, actually um, uh, in the category dimension, because this again is a specialized line chart, specialized line chart, the category dimension represent month per year, months per year, right? There are so many several options which are available. We uh, What has been selected is months per year. So it's always from January to December. And importantly, the series dimension, the, uh, it represents each of the years. So we have 2018, 19, and 2020. Okay, so that means each of these lines are representing uh, individual years. So by looking at this, well, what can we say? So obviously, um, any questions? Okay, so. Uh, Obviously, uh, uh, from a high level perspective, when we look at this, we, we always see that uh, the lines do not cross each other. So that means 20, uh, this uh, BCG coverage has generally been improving, right? So you have the green light here, 2018, this is 2019 and 2020. So it has been improving. But then again, we usually see that there are some uh, like, in January, it's usually a low value, right? And then there are spikes in between, for example, June and September. It's, it always seems to be going up, right? So there's some pattern, do you see? There is always a pattern that follows. So these patterns are very important to note so that you can do an interpretation. And even when you are planning your uh, uh, health services or else maybe, maybe when you are trying to improve the services, you can identify what are the areas where you are having bottlenecks? I mean, if for for uh, for an example, if uh, in January if it is reducing, what is the reason? So all these we will talk again. Uh, maybe uh, uh, I mean definitely during the interpretation sessions that we are uh, doing on day eight. But uh, I just wanted to highlight what uh, I mean. What are the advantages of having this kind of a year over year line chart? Right. If we don't have this visualization, we are talking about a very lengthy chart. Uh, uh, spanning across all the three years, and it's very difficult to compare uh, individual months of uh, different years, right? In a simple line chart. That's the advantage of having this kind of a chart. Okay. So, uh, in fact, we can try and compare it with. Uh, yeah, let me open another one. BCG. Uh, Average by month last three years. Yeah, this one. Okay. So hope you remember the previous chart I showed you about year on year. And let's contrast that with uh, this one. There you go. Okay. Now it's the same data, right? We have uh, 36 months, the same data element, right? And we have the occurrence, right? Uh, as a filter. And you are seeing all the 33, 36 months in this x-axis. Now, what's the problem? It's very difficult to compare uh, January 2018, which is here, with January 2019, which is there, right? So we can, yeah, we can feel, yeah, this is 69, 65.9, and this is 68.7. So 
it's a very tedious task. So that's what is facilitated by having here over here uh, line charts. Okay, All right. And any questions? Okay. All right. And here, uh, what we selected before was ear over ear line chart, but we also have the ear over ear uh, column chart, right? There are different types. Uh, there are actually two different types that are available for uh, ear over ear comparison. Okay. Right. Let me try to open that one again. Are there any questions up to this point? Right. So uh, what I'm going to do is to just talk a bit more about uh, the, the different options that we have in series and uh, categories uh, parameters when we are using year over year chart. So let's look at the series. So series is always, it's always the years, right? Uh, which are available. So for example, it could be relative years like this year, last year, last five years, or else uh, we have the, 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 the fixed years. And when it comes to the category, we have like, it doesn't have to be um, years, like it can be last three days, last seven days, last 12 months, right? Quarters per year. So, but only thing that you have to remember is both the series and categories are representing something to do with time period. Okay, that's the main difference when you talk about year over year charts. So the flexibility we had previously to apply series and I mean to apply data dimensions to series and categories, it doesn't happen in the year over year charts. Okay, that's a special thing about uh, that. That's a special thing we notice when we are doing year over year charts. Okay, right. Let us try to, now here we are seeing only one data item, which is uh, BCG coverage. Okay, let's see what happens if we try to put another one, right? So for example, I'm just uh, trying to put here, maybe MR2, um, MR2 coverage, right? I just put there and I'm going to click on update. And let's see what happens. What happens? It says there's a problem with the layout. A single indicator must be the only data item when using indicators as data in field. Okay, so here it only allows us to use one indicator, one data item, right? Either, I mean, say MR2 or BCG1, BCG coverage. So here you can't put multiple data values just like we used to do with line charts. We can't do it here because. Uh, I mean, it kind of uh, makes the interpretation very difficult when you have a couple of data items that are visualized. So you have to remember that uh, right now it only allows one data item to be included uh, in the filter. Okay, right. So I assume it is, are there any questions about year over year, how to use it and what are the advantages? So I think we didn't use year via column. We have just been using yeah via line on right. Oh, you want to do it in okay. Let's try to do year over year column. Yeah. Okay. So I I, I uh, change it to year year over year column and I update. And this is what I see, right? So that's again that's exactly what I was going to do next. So no, um, yeah. So here we have. What, what, what changed from line to column? Obviously, lines have been replaced by columns. And now what do we see here? In the x-axis, we have the months, January, February, all the way up to December. And the series, we are seeing each of the year, right? So yeah. to think now for this particular visualizations that we, that, that, that uh, the, the, for this uh, special data requirement that we wanted to address here, which one do you prefer, line or column? For me, line. You prefer line. What's the reason why you don't like column? 
actually, uh, when you actually, as I have said before, when you are called, you are using this year via comparison, you don't, you on, you, it's not only to compare the trend of um, from the, the beginning up to the end, but also you want to compare some kind of seasonal analysis. So when you want to compare like quotas, same quotas, same uh, the changes uh, or variations, and you want to talk about those uh, specific factors related to the seasonal issues, this uh, kind of um, columns will not really help to visualize when you you, you want to visualize uh, in your eyes. It's not easy to capture what you want to capture. Yeah. So the thing is. Just going back to this uh, yeah, well, fact I noted uh, when I was comparing chart types, when you're always thinking about trend analysis, lines are always better. So here we can see, say for example, we wanted to see like last three, uh, la during last three years, uh, in the month of April, what kind of uh, differences do we know? Like, I mean, is it like, uh, has, be, has it been improving? Yeah, that kind of analysis we can take. But then again, if, uh, if you want to compare January with October, October, like we, we have to look at, we have to focus uh, this part of the screen right at the beginning uh, to, to an area which is towards the, uh, towards the end in the time dimension, right? So to humanize this kind of comparisons in uh, column, uh, column charts is always difficult. So if our objective is to see whether the values have been changing over, uh, over the period uh, in last three years across months, lines are always much better so that uh, i mean and, and easily understood by people but still we have this uh, option available in case you are trying to you know like uh, just focus on one uh, particular period something like that all right uh, any more questions so else we can uh, move on to category charts Right, so um, I assume there are no questions. Are there any questions? Right. Okay, uh, let me open a favorite item, which is I will open this one, institutional delivery by locality last 12 months, and the chart type is column. Let me open. Let's leave. Right. This is what I see. Okay. So what do you understand just by looking at this uh, uh, visualization? What is different to pre, uh, what you have seen before? How many axes are there? One, about three. One, two, three. Uh, three, one, two, three. How many? About two, two, two X axes. Oh, okay, yeah, that, that's a better way of putting it. So it's not, <laughs> you, you don't actually say three axes, yeah, but there are two X axes, right? So you see one in the bottom, one at the top. So let's see what has happened, right? So here, uh, I mean, like we are very, fam so if you just uh, forget about this, uh, uh, the, the whatever the axis that is appearing here at the top, it's going to be just a uh, plain column chart, right? So you have the x-axis that are having data values. And here it was just going to be this uh, peri-urban, rural and urban chart, right? If you just come, uh, you know, concentrate on this one. But what has actually happened is, as he correctly mentioned, we have, two x-axis, one axis at the bottom. So like you can see the one here at the top is a period, right? Last 12 months. So you are seeing this last 12 months and you have another axis, right? Which is peri-urban, rural and urban, which is at the bottom. So essentially what happens is if you just concentrate on one segment here, you can see data from May 2020, disaggregated by uh, peri-urban, rural, and urban, right? So for each of the month, the data that is in the x-axis 
has been disaggregated. Okay, so this this is what uh, what we call as two category chart. So you have the category dimension here, and you also have a category dimension right at the top. Okay, so. Uh, I mean, these two category dimension charts are applicable to column, stacked column, bar, stacked bar, line, area, stacked area. So all these types of charts, these two categories are applicable, right? So whatever the column charts, bar charts, line charts, you can um, apply these two categories. Can we apply two categories to pie charts? No, probably. Yeah, sorry, yes. Did you say yes? Obviously not, right? So, so to pie charts, you can't apply. So the thing is like uh, the whatever the uh, charts that are, the, that are uh, I mean, categories are applied, you can try two category uh, charts. The ones that I mentioned, right? The plain bar and uh, stacked bar, uh, column and stacked column and the line. Okay. And which like now how do we know which one goes in the top as the category dimension and which one comes to the bottom so that in fact is selected uh, uh, based on the uh, order that we place them in the category uh, parameter so here we have the periods at the beginning and then the urban rural so let's try to swap it like this and click on update and see whether some whether anything changes so i click update and this is what i see so what actually happened we are now seeing uh, the rural, urban, peri-urban at the top and period at the bottom. So how it is configured is whichever one, but which is at the uh, beginning of this, uh, I mean, whichever uh, place first, in the category parameter is going to come here at the top. And the whichever, uh, which is the second one, or like what comes after that uh, is placed at the bottom. Okay, hope that is clear. All right, so uh, let us try to make uh, a category chart uh, from the scratch uh, rather than opening one that was already saved. So to do that, I will click on new and I click yes, leave, right? And for the data dimension, I will select um, an indicator institutional delivery rate height and the period i will keep um, last 12 months and the organization unit i will keep training land and let me update so when i do that this is what happens right so this is the plain chart that we had before so in this one, we have one y-axis, which is representing all the values. And we also have one x-axis uh, where we have all the periods of last 12 months, right? And what we can do is we can um, complicate this chart by adding urban, rural, peri-urban. I click here and I can select add to category, right? I do that. And I select these three, I will just hide it so that I see period and urban rural uh, coming here. So based on this, where do you think uh, we will have the uh, period dimension? Uh, we will have it at the bottom or the top if I click on update. What do you think? Uh, period on the top. Period on the top. Anybody say period on the bottom? Okay, let's try to update. And you are correct. Yes, we see the period at the top, right here. And if you just swap it and update, we see the period goes to the bottom and uh, the peri-urban rural urban category comes at the top. So this way you can, uh, you know, like uh, have a kind of a complex chart uh, which has multiple dimensions in the category uh, under the category parameter, okay?
We can also, for example, try to apply this, uh, maybe let's try to replace it with the area and click on update. This is what we see, right? So what I just did was it was previously column. I updated it to area. Let's try to see, try and see what happens if we select bar, right? See, we have like here now all. I mean, the thing is like you can remember, right? Column and bar, the the x and y axis swaps, right? So here, of course, uh, category goes to the y axis uh, when you are applying it to bar. Let's try line. I do like this, and you are seeing the line charts. So you can see it is applicable to column, stacked column, bar, stacked bar, line, area, right? For these charts. All right. Any questions up to this point? If not, we are moving on to the final. Topic that we are going to do today, which is uh, combination charts. Are there any questions in Slack or chat? No. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions related to the exercises, please ask in chat. Uh, our facilitators will uh, support you. I saw a few questions have already been raised. All right, um, let me share the screen again. We are here. Okay, uh, let me open a favorite item. Called ECG doses given. Coverage last 12 months. Let me open this one. Right. What do we see here? What is different here in this uh, chart compared to the previous charts we have see, uh, seen this far? What's the main difference that you see here? What's we the have a line and a column. You have a line and a column together. So yes. interpret this uh, chart. I mean, like, um, how do we like know uh, which axis uh, is representing the values for each of the chart type? How many axes are there in, in, in here? Two, I'm asking two, 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 two I axes. Okay, I like that answer, yes. So it's not three axis. So you prefer to say as yes, uh, we have two y axis and uh, only one x axis, x axis, right? So yes. So here we are seeing axis one, and we also have axis two um, uh, for the y axis. So we have two y axis: axis one and axis two, right? So basically, what has happened here is now, if you uh, look at the value ranges in each of the axis we can see axis one ranges from zero to uh, 40,000 and axis two ranges from 75 here or like even below and 87. So basically uh, we are also seeing the values of each of this uh, chart type. So we are seeing 30, uh, 30. So what I can do is I can uh, hide one chart type. Say if I want to just uh, look at uh, uh, the, the, Column charts, we are seeing the values ranges from like 30,000 and 31,000. So these are the range that the values are uh, spanning across across these uh, periods, right? So basically, you can see that it's an axis number one, uh, which is a Y axis here, that is representing the data visualized uh, in the column charts. And similarly, if you look at uh, the line chart, it's the 
axis two, which is actually having uh, data ranging from 76 to 80, 88, uh, that is represented here, okay? So another interesting thing to note is that these, uh, the starting value of the axis might change when you are using this combination chart by default, okay? But together, this is a very good visualization and there are so many use cases where we, where we want to uh, visualize two data items in two different chart types, but in same visualization. So this type of visualization, we refer to them as um, combination charts. Okay, right. So let's try to um, create this chart from, the, uh, chart from the scratch. So what I'm going to do is I will uh, click on new, right? For data, I will select from the data elements, I will select ECG doses given. And from indicators, I will select ECG coverage. Right. I have two of them, height, and the period I will leave as uh, 12 months and organization unit training land, right? And I click on update. And obviously, this is uh, the simple output that I will get because the chart type I have selected is column. So what's the problem that you see here? What is the issue? Is this chart okay or is there a problem? Yeah, the uh, internet coverage. Understand the bottom value of 79.2. Yeah, why, uh, why, why that happens? What's the reason it happens like that? Because uh, the uh, low percent is, uh, is percentage is so, uh, quite low as compared to the actual figures of the doses given. Yeah, the root cause for this issue is that we are having just one axis, right? So this one single axis, which is here, it has to cover the data representation of both these chart types, or rather than chart types, uh, uh, both these series uh, data data series that you are seeing here. So for example, the green ones are the uh, BCG doses and uh, the blue ones is the coverage. So because it's a coverage and it's a percentage, it's only going to range between zero and hundred. But whereas this dose is given, it can, you know, like virtually uh, range from zero to infinity. So the more, the higher the doses you have for any of these months, uh, the range of these y-axis is going to, you know, like significantly vary. And because of that, so, uh, most, I mean, like this value hundred, you are usually not going to even see. It's just that because uh, the values have been displayed. So for example, um, if I just hide value labels, the problem is then, uh, I mean, like we can't actually even uh, see that there's another chart uh, that exists, right? To uh, represent this ECG, BCG coverage. So that's a problem. So because of that, it's always good to have values at least to see like there is something here, down here. But to address this uh, practical problem, the solution is to use a combination chart. So let us see how we are going to do that. What we have to do is we have to click on options, right? And then we move on to this tab called series. So when we click on series tab, we are seeing our two data items, the doses given, which is the data element and the BCG coverage, which, which is the percentage, right? So at the moment, both of them are in the same chart type, column and line, right? And both of them are in the same axis. So what we can do is, to get the similar visualization as uh, I showed you before, uh, I mean, uh, the one I say, one I opened, the, the uh, saved favorite item, what we can do is I can convert one of these data items to a line. So let me uh, convert this one to a line chart, right? I do this, right? I, I just do this one, okay? And I click on update. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I selected a different chart type, but uh, is it the expected uh, output that we were hoping to see? No. No. The reason being? 
still our root cause remains because we only have one single axis. So to overcome this, what we can do is in the series tab, we can add this line chart to the second axis. Right? In fact, we can even add third and fourth axis. So if, if you are wondering where, where this third and fourth, fourth axis are going to be, now if you can focus your attention here, these are uh, the locations we are going to have axis. So basically, uh, all these four axes are going to be in the y axis, the main y axis. It's just that the axis one is going to be on left side, axis two is going to be on right side, axis three is going to be again on left side, outer left, and uh, axis four is going to be outer right. Okay, so I just select this one, axis two, and click on update. And there we go. We have the expected visualization that we uh, wanted to see. Okay, is that clear? So, so what if you put this uh, access to, to the access three? Okay, let's do that. You want to put this to access three. This one, right? Let's see. Mm -hmm. Right. What do you think? This is okay, but the thing is, you might confuse the end user with the two axes. It's just that like when they look at uh, this Y axis, they will see there are two value ranges, right? So obviously because, uh, based on the color, they can identify that, okay, the blue one uh, axis one is uh, the one that is ranging from zero to 40,000, whereas the green one from 75 to 87, but uh, most standard or acceptable, I, I would say the standard way is you, you can have it here or even yeah. access for. Is it possible to maintain a column chart and, 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 and change the axis? Like you have them on separate axis, but they in the same column chart. La, la. Same, same column, different uh, axis. Yeah, okay, yeah. let me do that. Yeah, right. So here, so you want me to keep it here, but uh, make it make the axis like this, right? So it's yeah. both on that. Okay, let's see. This is what I get. Oh, Obviously it is possible, mm. right? So only thing uh, the person who's interpreting uh, will have to, you know, like uh, because the 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 only difference is it's all about how your users interpret. If they are really familiar with seeing DHS2 column charts, uh, which have multiple data items, they might try to interpret as just a plain column chart without uh, focusing on this axis, right? That's the kind of downside. Do you understand? Uh, yeah, because yeah. Our yeah. users are so much familiar with our traditional DHS2 column charts, they will totally ignore this. They will think that, uh, obviously, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not saying like this will happen all the time, but like, if you actually look at these data values, uh, uh, they will understand. But in case if these data values are hidden, then of course it's it can be a disaster, right? They will oh, just yeah. they will, they might think okay, coverage thirty thousand, <laughs> that's what can happen. So yeah, but yeah, it's a good question. So let me again put it in this one update. And let's make this uh, one further more complicated, right? So now we are dealing with, uh, yeah, of course, two axes, but we have two y axes. So let's make it uh, two y axis and two x axis, right? We have already dealt with two x axis. So uh, let's try to do that. So what we can do is we can apply this urban rural dimension to which one? Series or category? What should I do? What do you think? Series or category? Category. Okay. Let's try that. Category. Yeah, hello. Yes. Okay. Shall I update? Okay. Let me update. And this is what we see. Yeah. It's a very complex chart, right? So now this is where we can confuse the users, right? So when they look at it, they will first I mean, try to figure out what they, I mean, like, what, what is this, right? So, because here, but I mean, it's not very easy to interpret. So you are seeing the periods, 
x-axis and peri-urban rural y-axis, right? And for each of them, you have a y-axis of VCG doses and a y-axis of VCG coverage, right? So you can do it, but uh, always just think whether this is something really good to do because like sometimes even though you can have this complex visualization, uh, thinking of the time people might take to interpret this, uh, you might as well create two different charts so that uh, you know interpretation is much simpler. Okay, so you have the tools to use it, but how to use it and to apply it to your context is all what matters. So we'll, I mean, this is what we are going to discuss in the interpretation. So I really hope uh, in that day you come up, you can compare each of these uh, charts and come in critically. Why you did not use this, you know, multiple uh, two category combination charts as opposed to uh, a simple column chart. Okay. Right. So basically we have covered everything. Um, so just to summarize what we have covered in the day, let me stop sharing and going back to the object. Before, before you finish. Yes, yes, please. Uh, on the same one, uh, can you have a look at it as um, uh, when you choose the series instead of category? Sorry, uh, let me share my screen again. Um, yeah, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. So the rural urban. So this one, you want to move it to series, right? Yes. Okay. And you want to have data also here? Uh, no, no, just one. Sorry. Um, uh, we have to allow only one in the series, right? See? Oh, okay. 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 Huh. I mean, that's how the chart type works. So you can't have multiple uh, uh, data items or dimensions in the series. So you can decide. So, for example, if I let's see what happens if I do this. Now you will have to decide how to interpret. Uh, yeah. It's very difficult, right? Difficult, yes. yes. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Let me go back to... Are there any questions? Okay, no, nothing. Okay, going back to the objectives of the day. What we covered in part one was, um, we went through the overview of data visualizer interface. So we just quickly recapped what we did in pivot table sessions yesterday. Okay, and then uh, we went through different charts, uh, like the, what are the inputs for the chart? Like we had data dimension, the organization units and periods. Right, and also how to rearrange the layout of the chart using category, series, and filter. So we defined category, series, and filter. This is a very important concept to understand category, series, and filter. And also remember, you cannot say category appears in x-axis, right? Category appears in y-axis. No, it's not like that. It totally depends on the chart type in DHS, right? But you just you can understand category is the primary grouping. And then series will further subgroup uh, what is appearing in the category, right? That's how it works in bar, uh, column, and line charts and area, right? But in uh, pie charts, it's totally different and you don't talk about categories. And then, um, of course, uh, how to work with the disaggregations in the chart, we talked about it. And what are the different chart types and when to apply, what are the best practices in applying each of the chart types that we discussed, right? And then we uh, uh, discuss about several chart options like adding titles, 100% stack values, how to sort. And I, if you can remember, I mentioned like it's the first item that is there based on which the sorting happens if you have multiple items and how to put the target line, baseline, right? And also how to download charts. And then in the part three, we discuss about pie charts, radar and spider charts, and the gate charts as well as uh, the uh, single value charts, okay? And then finally, in the last session, we talked about how to mention, uh, how to have the cumulative values, right? Especially, uh, uh, I mean, like, if you can remember that male and female example, how the cumulative value application changed the visualization. And then we talked about year over year chart, 
which uh, different charts which are there, right? And then, of course, uh, finally, we talked about uh, the combination charts, right? We, where we have two y axis, right? And also, we talked about multiple categories, like where you can have two x axis. And we talked about uh, the possible application of two y axis and two x axis. And of course, the implications of having these kind of complication, complicated visualizations, right? So, I guess that's all we discussed uh, for today. And we can conclude the session. Of course, there is a graded uh, exercise which is available to you, uh, which you have to submit. And please uh, also do the ungraded exercise, uh, which will grow through all the steps that I have covered in the day. So if you can complete the ungraded one and uh, the graded exercise, that would be good enough. Uh, uh, and you will be able to uh, achieve the expected level of skills and knowledge that is required for the data visualizer uh, section. So any questions? If not, we can conclude for the day and you can continue with the exercises and our uh, facilitators will stay online on Slack channel uh, to assist you all. And two reminders before uh, we conclude, please um, complete your attendance, the word of the day. And of course, we really appreciate the feedback. So if you have forgotten to give feedback in the previous days, Please uh, give us a feedback. We always go through them and try to, um, more, I mean, try to change the way we present and way we conduct the academy. Um, yeah. So, thank you so much. Tomorrow, uh, we we don't have any sessions tomorrow, isn't that so, Saurabh? Yeah, we are not having any sessions tomorrow, uh, and uh, hopefully, yeah, Saurabh there. Yeah, uh, we meet on Monday. Definitely. Yeah. If you really want, we can try try to have it on Saturday, but I don't think anyone wants to have sessions on Saturday, right? So if that is the case, then uh, have a great weekend. Uh, see you all again at the same time on Monday, right? Uh, if there are any questions, please uh, um, type them and uh, raise them in the Slack. If you have any issues with exercises, uh, the graded or the uh, ungraded, let us know and please uh, give us a feedback. And on Monday, we will uh, do the map session. Again, a bit of a lengthy topic. Um, but then uh, it's a very important one. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Saurabh, anything else you want to uh, communicate? No, just a happy weekend to everyone. And see you all on Monday. Right. Then thank you so much. Uh, see you all on Monday. And have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.